Welcome back to Sector 666. Today we are looking at three of the most haunted places in the world. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Elite Drive is an undivided two-lane highway and main thoroughfare of New Manila, Quezon City, Philippines. This major road for jeepneys and taxis serving the New Manila region connects Eulogio Rodriguez Sr. Avenue and Nicanor Domingo Street in Quezon City. The Belit Drive was named after a huge Belit tree that stood in the center of the street at one time. Even though the exact construction date is unknown, the highway was cemented, asphalted, and turned into the main thoroughfare in the early 1970s during the regime of President Ferdinand Marcos. Several Spanish houses in the vicinity support the case that Belit Drive has been used since the late Spanish period towards the tail end of the 19th century. The street had been lined with big Belit trees in the past, which considerably darkened the area and made some Manila residents frightened. Belit trees are considered a home for spirits and enigmatic creatures in Pinoy folklore. Since the 1950s, various legends and folklore have spread that the street is haunted. Most legends describe a white woman ghost indigenously referred to as Caparosa, a famous Philippine folklore figure who supposedly haunts taxi drivers for eternity. Based on legend, the ghost is a young girl who was hit by a taxi in the dark of the night and killed by a driver, then buried under a Belit tree at Belit Drive. One version of the legend states that a female student at the University of the Philippines was sexually assaulted by a taxi driver and killed. Her spirit wanders the streets looking for her killer. Most of the accounts about her have been told by taxi drivers on the graveyard shift, like when a taxi crosses Belit Drive and a beautiful woman requests a ride. The taxi driver then glances behind and sees that the woman's face is covered with bruises and blood, causing him to abandon his taxi in terror. In other instances, it's believed that when people are driving alone on this road in the early morning, they briefly see the face of a white-dressed woman in the rearview mirror before she disappears quickly. A few of the crashes on this road are attributed to the appearances of the white lady. 50. Berkeley Square is a residence in Mayfair, central London. It grew to be known as one of London's most haunted houses in the late 19th century. When Thomas Myers moved into the home in 1859, strange things began to happen. Rumor had it that his fiancée had rejected him. He lived on his own, and it was believed he locked himself in his room and gradually went mad till his death in November 1874 at the age of 76. During his stay in the home, it fell into great disrepair, and its reputation started to develop. The local council even sued Myers for not paying taxes. The magistrate excused him when he failed to show up in court as he was known to live in a haunted house. The house's legend differs, but most versions say that the attic room is haunted by the spirit of a woman who committed suicide there. She is believed to have thrown herself out of a window on a top floor after being abused by her uncle and is believed to be capable of scaring people to death. The spirit is thought to have the shape of a brown mist, although it is sometimes described as a white figure. A rare version of the story is that a young man was locked in the attic room and fed only by a hole inside the door till he ultimately went insane and died. In 1879, a story in the Mayfair magazine stated that a woman that stayed in the attic room was discovered mad and had died in an asylum the morning after. Captain Kentfield's death is one of the most haunted incidents. His trip got off to an uncomfortable start as a shrill scream ripped through the ceiling of the Mayfair house. He and his hosts rushed upstairs to locate a young maid on the floor of what was to be his room, gibbering. Don't let it touch me, the maid said. The captain, not wanting to appear to be a coward, decided to stay in this room. His hosts were, however, awakened by a terrifying bellowing in the dark of the night. A gunshot. And then silence. The captain's body was twisted and pale when they reached the bedroom. Modern experts have indicated that the home was never haunted. A typical conclusion was that neglect of the home had prompted imaginative stories about ghosts. Since the Mags brothers purchased the home in the late 1930s, no phenomena have been reported. 
Even though numerous contemporary news outlets have reported events at the house, recent investigators say nothing unusual has ever happened there. The Myrtles Plantation is a historic house and former antebellum plantation in St. Francisville, Louisiana, United States. Constructed in 1796 by General David Bradford on 600 acres and was named Laurel Grove. For several years, Bradford lived alone in Pennsylvania till President John Adams pardoned him for his part in the Pennsylvania Whiskey Rebellion in 1799. Then he moved his wife Elizabeth along with her five children from Pennsylvania to the plantation. After Bradford's demise in 1808, his widow Elizabeth continued operating the plantation till 1817, when she handed the management to Clark Woodruff, one of Bradford's former law students, who had married her daughter, Sarah Matilda. Before Sarah Matilda and two of her three children passed away from yellow fever in 1823 and 1824, the Woodruffs had three children, Africa Gale, James, and Mary Octavia. When Elizabeth Bradford passed away in 1831, Clark Woodruff moved to Covington, Louisiana, with his remaining daughter, Mary Octavia, and left the caretaker to manage the plantation. Woodruff sold the plantation, slaves, and land to Ruff and Gray Sterling in 1834. Mary Catherine Cobb and her husband Sterling undertook an extensive renovation of the house, nearly doubling the dimensions of the former building and filling the home with imported furniture from Europe. During this period, the name was changed to the Myrtles after the crepe Myrtles developed in the area. In 1854, Sterling died and left his wife the plantation. The plantation is said to have at least 12 ghosts, and is listed as one of the most haunted homes in America. It is often reported that there were 10 murders in the home, but historical records only point to the murder of William Winter. Chloe perhaps the most famous of the alleged ghosts of the Myrtles, was reportedly a slave belonging to Clark and Sarah Woodruff. Based on one story, Clark Woodruff pressured Chloe to become his mistress. Other variations of the legend include Chloe listening in on keyholes to find out the news of Clark Woodruff's business dealings and for other uses. One of her ears was cut off as soon as she was caught by Clark or maybe Sarah Woodruff, and she put on a green turban to cover her ears. Chloe baked a cake for one of the two daughters, which had an extract of boiled and reduced oleander leaves, which are extremely poisonous. She did it simply because she wanted to get work back inside the building. Some say she was obtaining revenge on the Woodruffs, and some say she was trying to redeem her role by curing the family of the poisoning. Based on the legends, her strategy went wrong. Sarah and her two daughters consumed the cake, and all of them died of poison. Then, Chloe was allegedly hanged by the other slaves and hurled into the Mississippi River as punishment or escape punishment from Clark Woodruff for keeping her. The historical record does not support this legend. There is no evidence that the Woodruffs owned a slave called Chloe or any slaves at all. Legends usually say Sarah and her two daughters have been poisoned, but Mary Octavia made it through well into adulthood. Cornelia Woodruff, James, and Sarah were not killed by poisoning but rather died of yellow fever. Some still believe a woman wearing a green turban haunts the plantation, regardless of the factual accuracy of the Chloe story.